Hey everybody, it's Dowden. In this video, I'm going to show you how to mix your low end like a professional. Mixing your low end is notoriously difficult, especially when you don't have a properly treated room or proper sound systems to replicate the low end. I'm going to show you a bunch of different ways that you can make your low end sound as professional as possible without having a properly treated room, without having to need the use of a subwoofer or something like a sub pack. There's gonna be a lot of information in this video, so let's go ahead and dive in, but before we do, make sure to hit that subscribe button with notifications on so you get more videos like this one. And let's go ahead and jump into the DAW. I have this example. I have a kick that's tuned to F sharp. I have this sub bass that's hitting F sharp. And I can check in my span to see the frequency. If you don't already have Span, I'll put a link to it in the description below. It's a free plugin and I definitely recommend you grabbing it. And then we have this higher octave of bass. It's important to note that when you are mixing your low end, you're not just paying attention to the sub frequencies, but you're also paying attention to the higher frequencies of the bass, like your, your second or th even third octave of bass. So even though this one is hitting at around 90 hertz, we still have to pay attention to that. If it's too low in the mix, it can the, the overall track can sound thin. And if it's too loud, then it can start to sound a little bit bongy and muddy. One more quick note before we get to the first method is that it's also really prominent in your kick. Pay attention to those frequencies because at around this second octave or third octave of bass, we have a little bit of punchiness. If we take that out of the kick, we lose quite a bit of presence and it'll start to sound a little bit thin and not as powerful. It's important to pay attention to both the sub frequencies of our kick and bass as well as our mid frequencies of our kick and bass. Our first method is creating room for our low end. If our kick and bass are hitting at the exact same time at the exact same frequency, then we're going to run into issues in our mix. We can run into muddiness, phase cancellation, among other things. So to make room for our bass and kick in the mix, I'm going to EQ out any competing overlapping frequencies in the rest of the instruments. So let's take a look at our shaker loop. You might think that it being a shaker loop, we don't have to take out the low end because it's a high end instrument. But if I open up an EQ on that channel, we'll see that we do have a little bit of low end. It's not much and it's probably not enough to really cause any big issues. But when we have lots and lots of instruments, multiple layers with this low end rumble, it can really add up. It can take out some of the room you have for your mix, your headroom. It can cause issues in the low end as well with phase cancellation, among other things. So let's cut that out. A good area to roll off your low end for instruments that don't really need the frequencies is about one to 200. And for higher instruments, you can go a little bit higher, but we wanna make sure that we don't have any other instruments interfering with the sub frequencies and the bass frequencies up to at least around 100 is, is usually where I go. Let's get rid of that. Doing this to all the instruments in your mix is a good idea. Making sure you're not removing too many frequencies, you want to be checking in the context of the mix as well as A being inside the actual sound. So if I bring in this extra instrument, this bass top that I have, I can see that I have bass and sub frequencies that I definitely want to take out to make room for my sub and my kick. I can see that it's F sharp here. I know that my second octave of bass is hitting around here. And so I'm going to roll off just past that. Once I get past 100, I'm not as worried about the frequencies overlapping, but I still do want to be careful. And then I want to listen in the context of the mix. It's not making a huge difference to the actual sound, especially layered up with those other layers of bass. So it sounds good. You want to make sure you're checking your mix before and after you're doing any EQing. Rolling off the low end to make room for the kick and bass frequencies is a good idea, but we also want to be rolling off the low end below the kick and the bass frequencies. General rule of thumb is to roll off below 20 hertz. There is some debate about this rolling off between 20 and 40 hertz. It is dependent on your style, your genre, and the key of the track. So my general rule of thumb is I find the key of the track, which is F sharp, and I go to the lowest octave around 20 hertz. So this 
F sharp is hitting at around 45 hertz. I'll go down to the next octave, which is around 20, and that's going to be 22.5 to 25 hertz. So I'll roll off just below there. If your track is in a key that goes pretty low, maybe below 20, like C sharp, for example, we're hitting about 17 hertz. I would suggest going to the next octave, which is up here at around 33, 34 hertz. Of course, every track is different. Every situation is different. And sometimes you don't want to be going as close as this to 40. You might lose some of the power. The mix might sound pretty thin. So just be careful of that and make sure you're always referencing your low end um, as, as far as down to the 20 hertz area the best you can. Let's turn that bass top off again and let's focus on just the sub and the bass frequencies for now with the kick. The next thing I want to be doing is sidechain compression. I know that you probably already know about this, but it's something I definitely have to cover. So I'm going to grab my compressor, throw that on the entire bass bus. I want to compress my low end. I want to compress the second octave of bass and this bass top that I'm going to be adding in later. I want to make sure that I'm also sidechain compressing that to make room for my kick. So I have my sidechain compression on the bass bus. Sidechain from the kick. And my attack and release settings are going to be pretty quick. I'm going to reduce this threshold until I get about 5 to 10 dB of gain reduction. And you can see that the gain reduction is not hitting zero in between every kick hit. So I want to reduce my release time until this gain reduction is going back to zero. If I don't reduce that release time and that game reduction is happening too long, we're going to start to overlap our compression. And it's going to sound really flat very, very quickly. Let's listen before and after the sidechain compression. To me, it sounds like we're compressing too much, so I'm going to reduce it to about 5 dB game reduction. Pretty happy with that. We can move on to the next step. So the second method for obtaining a professional sounding low end in your mix is to polish your low end. So what I mean by that is to bring the best out of your low end, making it clean, but also have more of a midsection presence so that you can hear it just a little bit better. It's perceived as a little bit louder, a little bit more present, and it just has a little bit of tightness to that bass so that it just sounds more professional overall. So to achieve this, we're going to use saturation or harmonic content to bring forward that bass so that it sounds louder and more professional. There's three ways that we can do this. The first is by adding saturation directly to the sound. So I have this saturator on my bass bus and I can turn up the drive. And the more I turn up the drive, the more harmonic content we're going to get. 8 to 10 dB, we have a bit of a tasteful saturation. And I can open up the EQ and show you what's actually going on. Once we pass about eight, we're going to start to get into distortion and it's going to start to sound pretty awful and really, really aggressive. And I want you to pay attention to what's actually happening in the EQ as well. We're getting all this extra content. We're getting tons of peaks. We're getting tons more frequencies, but obviously it sounds pretty harsh. So I'm going to back it off until it starts to sound tasteful again. Maybe turn my dry wet down a little bit. And to me, that sounds pretty good. It sounds pretty warm. It sounds like it's a little bit louder. Let's make sure that we're not just turning up the drive, which is increasing the overall volume and that it sounds better. Let's make sure the volumes match. So it sounds louder. Let me turn this output down a little bit. Maybe the drive up one more. To me, it sounds about the same level of volume, but it feels more present with the saturator on. And we can see there's a couple more peaks here with the saturator on as well. 
The second way of getting this is just simply by changing the waveform that we have. So we have this sine wave. It is the purest form of frequency. It's just a single frequency, and it is what's really common in bass and sub bass because it's so clean. But if we add just a little bit of a triangle wave into our wavetable, we're adding more harmonic content. So let's open up that EQ on here. And the more I push up from the sine wave, the more harmonic content you're going to see. And here, obviously. But that sounds a little bit too much, right? It's obviously very aggressive. So if we just introduce a little bit and filter out the high end, we're getting that nice warmth again. So that is going to give us more presence, more warmth, and it's going to sound louder and more professional. A really good thing to note about this is by doing this, we're going to hear that bass over speakers that can't produce bass very well. So cell phones, earbuds, um, you know, certain laptop speakers that don't have that subwoofer, they don't have anything that can produce bass. If I filter out that low end, turn the kick off, we can still hear the bass a little bit. compared to before, can't really hear much. Just adding that harmonic content, we can now hear it even if we can't really hear it, you know? You know. The last way we can do this is by adding a layer of harmonic content such as a pluck. So just like we did with this sub, adding these triangle waves to give us a bit more of a presence, I can use this top layer of this pluck that I made which obviously is much more audible. It has a lot more content. I've already filtered at the low end, but now I have this rich high end. But say it's too much with the rest. You don't want the pluck. You just want that kind of warmth. We can just filter at the high end again. And there we go. We can check again with the EQ. We're still only using that higher end. We're still only listening to what it's adding. And let's turn off the EQ before and after. It's adding that warmth. It's adding that extra presence and that polish. After adding the saturated sounds, the harmonics onto your bass instruments, it's a good idea to check that you're not getting a muddy signal. The mud usually accumulates between 100 to 300 hertz, and by adding these saturated or harmonic signals, we can sometimes accumulate a bit of mud in this area. So looking at the bass bus now, I can see that I have this F sharp, I have this F sharp, I have this F sharp, so we have the three octaves here, but then I also have this C sharp here. The C sharp is added because of the harmonics that the saturation or the waveforms have added. Having this frequency can bring a bit of presence and warmth to the sound, but having too much of it kind of sounds a little bit muddy. And uh, let's take a listen if I push this frequency up. So it's taking away the punchiness of the sound. It's sounding a little bit flatter now. So sometimes it's a good idea to just reduce this a little bit and clean up that midsection. A gentle cut around the 100 to 300 area can also alleviate some muddiness. Luckily, the sound isn't too muddy to begin with, so just a gentle cut is all it's needed. Last thing I want to do is add a bit of compression onto the entire bus. And I'm going to just do maybe 2 dB of gain reduction on the bass, sub bass, and the bass top. So I know that it's just glued together. It feels like one sound. It's going to be a pretty subtle change, but it's just a good idea. Slow attack, so it's a little bit punchier. And release, I'll put to auto. Very, very subtle, but it's almost just a peace of mind knowing that they sound just a little bit more glued together and they sound a little bit more present and, and uh, professional. I also want to put my sidechain compressor after because I want to make sure that I'm sidechain compressing the loudest signal, not before I compress.
The third method is balancing your mix properly, and not just in volume, but in the stereo image as well. So first, I'm going to grab this reference track. I've brought it down to negative 10 dB. And then what I'm going to do is start to mix my kick and bass to the levels of the kick and bass in the reference track and try to get them as close as possible so that when I do my final mix, my kick and bass are already mixed well to a professional sounding track and I can mix the rest of the elements around that. I brought it down 10 decibels because the track is mastered that I'm referencing, so it's going to be hitting zero. By bringing it down 10 decibels, I'm giving myself at least 10 decibels of wiggle room for when I do the rest of the mix so that I do leave myself enough headroom. So I'm going to solo this reference track. I have cut out most of the high end. Let's go a little bit closer here to about 200. And I'm going to throw that same EQ on my master channel. And I'm going to grab span and I'm going to grab a Ulean loudness meter and I'm going to throw that in the master as well. The track that I'm referencing is in the same key that I'm writing and you want to use a track that's similar to your style and sounds similar to your track so you can get the best comparison. So what I'm looking for first is what the reference track is hitting on the master. So we're hitting about negative 21.3 loudness units full scale. That's this number right here. That's the perceived loudness, how loud we perceive that volume. Now what I'm going to do is try to bring my kick and bass so that it's at least pretty close to that level in the loudness units full scale. Let's just focus on our kick first. And then bring in the bass. Click the X to reset. So pretty loud. Okay, so we're pretty close, but now I'm going to focus specifically on the kick and the sub. So I'm going to cut out even more of this frequency. I'm going to go right down to the sub frequencies of the sound. And if you can grab just the kick in the reference track, this makes it even easier. So I'm going to solo my kick and solo the reference track. And now I'm going to use both Ulean and Span to see the levels that I have here. So the kick is hitting at around negative 46. And the reference track is hitting a little bit louder with the kick and the bass. Let's solo both the kick and the sub. So the kick looks like it's a good volume, but the bass looks quite a bit louder. So I'm going to turn that bass down. And I can hear that it's much louder than the kick as well. Compare with the reference track again. Sounding pretty close, and it's looking pretty close as well. Let's back off up to about two or th maybe 300 and cut out the sub now. And we'll check the reference track. So the reference track is much quieter here, so let's turn that second octave of bass down, which is right here. And take a listen again. Much closer. And of course, it doesn't need to be exact. This is just a, getting a general guideline for our track because every track is different. Every taste is different. This is just a good way of balancing out our low end first. Okay, now let's take off that EQ on the low end. And let's take a listen. Maybe back off a little bit more. The reference track sounds just a little bit subbier. Maybe my kick needs just a little bit more boost in that low end. That sounds better. And this is a great reference. This is a great point to start and start fine tuning everything else in your mix. We'll check one more time on the Yoon Lean loudness meter. And it looks like our track is a little bit louder. So let's bring this down in volume to match the Yoon Lean as well. We're thinking about 22. And we're pretty close with the reference track now. So using both the Yuli loudness meter and the span, I've, I've gotten a pretty balanced mix using both my ears, primarily use these first, and then my eyes. 
The last thing that I'm gonna show you is using span to check the correlation meter. The track does sound good in mono. So I'm gonna throw a utility on the master and I'm going to check the mix in mono. And what we're listening for is that the mix sounds healthy in both stereo and mono. Turn the drums off and just listen to the low end. To me, it sounds good in both stereo and mono. And just to make sure, I'm going to look at this correlation meter inside of span. And I can see that it's going positive all the way to this one here. If I solo just this bass top instrument, we can see that we're getting a little bit of phase correlation going out of phase, meaning we do run the possibility of getting a little bit of phase cancellation. Overall, the mix does sound good. And if we check the entire mix, we are positive here. I don't hear myself losing any information due to phase cancellation, just this bass on its own. We're getting a little bit of out of phase correlation here. I can see that it's going to the negative and that could cause phase cancellation. So what I'm gonna do is open up an EQ and throw that on the bass top here. And I'm gonna change this to mid side mode and change this mode from mid to side. And I'm going to remove any stereo image below say one to 200 at least. And when I do this, you should see that the span is going to start to look a lot better in the correlation. We're just gonna to start to get those positive numbers again. This is because we are removing the stereo image from below this point here, below this 200, 300 hertz. Uh, we're all the way up at 560 now. So that's what it took to fix the correlation. I'll bring it back just a little bit, but this is a really good practice if you have any uh, stereo imaging on your low end. If you put reverb on things that are a little bit lower, or if you have stereo imaging on lower sounding instruments, it's a good idea to check your correlation and if need be, remove with some mid side EQ. There's been a lot of information in this video, so I'm going to do a quick recap to make sure we go over some of the main points. Removing the low end from your instruments is great for leaving room for your kick and bass to sit in your mix. But make sure you're not removing too many of the frequencies and you're always checking before and after in the context of your mix. When dealing with sidechain compression, you usually want to have your sidechain at the end of your chain, exception being maybe you want to put reverb or delay after. A good starting point is to have about 5 to 10 decibels of gain reduction and have your attack and release settings fairly quick so that your sidechain compression is not overlapping itself. Scooping around 100 to 300 hertz is a great way to alleviate some of the mud in the lower end of the mix, but don't do too much or you could run into a thin mix and you could lose some of the punchiness as well. Adding harmonics is a great way to give a bit more warmth and power to the low end, but adding too much in can be a bit aggressive and make sure that you're EQing properly, that you're not overdoing it and you're not running into a muddy mix. Always check your mix in mono to make sure that it does work in both stereo and in mono. If you do run into issues, you can use mid-side EQ to remove those conflicting frequencies. Always make sure you're listening on multiple devices, headphones, monitors, your car stereo, as many as possible to make sure you're getting the best mix across all sound systems. All right, everybody, thanks for watching. I hope you learned something. If you did, make sure to smash that like button. And if you're new to the channel or you haven't already yet, make sure to hit subscribe so that you get more videos that are gonna teach you awesome stuff like this. Also check the description below. There's a free sample pack and some free checklists. And I'll see you in the next video.